All right, guys, so day in the life episode, kind of, with shop update. Starting out the day, it is the day after Easter. I went ahead, slept in a little bit. Ain't done that in a hot minute. It was nice. Got out of the house about 11. Uh, I got a remote into a bike here in a minute. It's a Harley that did a backflip a couple years ago. Helped him set up wheelie control. But before this weather hits, I'm down here at storage. Y'all have never seen the storage, so... I just rolled Christian Sandy's bike down here to get it out of the way. We've got the, uh, what is this, K5 Jixxer 1000. We built the motor on, sitting down here, chilling, waiting for the customer. Uh, I got to see that that oil leak is not from this. I think that oil leak is from a motor that was blowed up in here for a long time. I think it's from this one. Because this one's got a hole in it. There's the ZX14. We got the dirt bike. And we got the Texas Red bike. I'm also going up here to get Kevin Jones' bike code red and put it down here because if I'm going to store it, I'm going to store it in storage, not in the shop. So, that's what we're working on right now. I'm going to go get that. The air compressor was flat this morning because I had the welder plugged in, not the air compressor. It's been running for about three minutes. It's still running. It's probably going to get freaking really goddamn hot and surge out. Uh, they don't like to run from empty. <laughs> but uh, we'll touch base next. I'm going to do that remote session quick and then we'll touch base. We're going to jump on the Texas Red Bike that I'm putting the cams in and uh, we'll see if that solves that. Alright folks, so that's the remote session done. Just set up some wheelie control on a Harley, got him through the basic calibrations of it and he's got a really soft tune up in it, should work great. We're going to meet up at Brainerd, he's going to test this weekend. The next time I see that bike will be at the Brainerd SDBA race in two weeks. Uh, so. I got to put a switch on Kevin Jones' bike, uh, wire it in for the two-step, and then that bike's done. I can put the carbon back on it, tuck everything away, put it away. Um, I'm going to go ahead and roll this Jixxer back into that hole. Hams is coming over. Uh, Scotty's going to come pull the motor. I'm going to roll that Jixxer out, get the side fairings put on it, uh, and then it can go home. As soon as the air filter comes in, air filter's supposed to be here tomorrow. Cross my freaking fingers. Um, and then I'm going to try something on Chris Charles' bike. So I have two motors in here with flat pans on them. I'm going to put my personal flat pan on Chris Charles' bike and see if it solves the oiling issue. I think it's these on three pans that are causing the issue. So I'm going to drop the oil. It needs changed anyway at this point. It hasn't been changed since it was built. And I'm going to change the pan out for my pan and my pickup and put fresh oil in it and see if it quits burning through the turbo. Uh, if that's the case, then this silver bike will be getting the same treatment. I got another pan with swivel pickup and I'll be taking his on three pan off, throwing it in the bin and giving him that one because I'm sick and tired of this and it just needs to be resolved. Because uh, even the big loop double check valve with a reservoir under the turbo still getting drained back into the turbo and I have no freaking clue why. And the only thing that these bikes, all the bikes I'm fighting right now that have in common is an on three oil pan. So, shot in the dark, let's try it. Uh, for now though, I'm gonna go ahead, clean up the floor, roll that out, and get the cams degreed in, and the valve lash set, so I can start firing it up. Greg Smith has got some push buttons on the way for me. Uh, one will be a clutch push button, one will be the starter button push button for the stock harness, they're just a bypass kit. And then I've got a toggle switch for the Ignition bypass. I'm running one of his ignition bypasses. Actually, this is an RSR bypass, an old one. Uh, in any case, that should do it. I'll update you on the next update some point later today. All right, folks. So, honestly, I have no clue where I left off. So, we're going to jump back. Uh, I got the ACs turned on, and they're both working. That one's kind of freaking lazy. Not going to lie, that one's kind of lazy. It is every year. It needs recharged. I really need to get a leak fixed. Uh, so, I don't remember what my plan was for the day, but I'll go over what I got done. Forest motor. I got it up on a cherry picker, got the oil drained out because he brought it to me completely freaking full. And it is not here anymore. It's in there. Stripped completely down. Did find a few things on that one. Third gear dogs are knocked. Uh, these things are notorious for transmission issues. I know he has a parts motor. We're going to see if the transmission's good in it. Second thing, the... Let's see if I can get some light on the situation. Oil pump. Uh, light's probably washing it out. You can see the lines in there. The case has seen better freaking days. That case is rough cleaned. I got a lot of cleaning to do on that. But 
The oil pump itself is FUBAR. Like really, really FUBAR. <laughs> Never seen one quite this bad FUBAR. So he needs an oil pump. That was kind of expected. Cam chain, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it. Do, 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 do. See how it's, there. See how that link's not bending? Needs a cam chain. Cam chain tensioner, someone had cranked that thing down with an impact. So it had a manual CCT and it was completely freaking bottomed out. Well, it was completely bottomed out because someone got a little crazy with it. So he needs a cam chain tensioner guide, uh, cam chain tensioner side cam chain guide, cam chain and oil pump, along with the bearings, and he's already got a crank and rods. Uh, and I'm going to suggest if his parts motor has a decent transmission input shaft to suggest we replace that. Uh, let's see. So that's where I'm at on that. I got all those parts in that bin are cleaned and ready for assembly. Just got that case have to desiliconize, knock the bearings out of, clean the living daylights out of, and then it'll be ready for assembly too. Uh, I do have bearings for that already. He was going to reuse his gaskets. He's not going to reuse his gaskets. We're putting new gaskets in it. I don't care. They are reused, reused, reused. Uh, they were covered in silicone. They're just not going to fly. So we're going to put all new gaskets in it. So he's going to have to bring me money for gaskets, oil pump, timing chain, and timing chain guide. He's coming by tomorrow. I'm going to show him all those things. And the cases make me nervous because I can never trust those. I'll, I'll never trust those cases again. But I don't know what his other cases look like either. And he's already got bearings for these cases, so it's up to him. We'll have a conversation on that and decide what we're going to do from there. Let's see. <laughs> Anyway, I got another ZX-10 motor dropped off today. This one is stuck in third gear. I think it's stuck in like, well, earlier it was spinning. Now it's not spinning at all. It, it, it's got some very severe damage in that transmission. Tomorrow I'm gonna come in. This one's gotten heat cycled out. This one is done with break-in. So tomorrow I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna change the oil in this. Hopefully I get a call that an air filter came in and I can put an air filter in it and send it home. Um, I'm going to degree the cams that I put in that and see if that solves that thing's issue. I got to put a toggle switch. I just got to run two wires to this toggle switch for his two-step on off and put the side fairing. I'm missing a side fairing. I think he's got the side fairing that's missing. Put the side fairing on it, air the tire down, set the clutch back up, and that thing's ready to go. I got the clutch set up there, seat, all that. Uh, I'm going to clean this table off tomorrow too. Uh, I have been mopping and working and working and mopping. So I had to get a renewed lease from the landlord today to get the water hooked back up because water got unhooked because my lease is expired. And it's just, just a whole mess there. Anyway, I got a new lease. I uh, renewed my lease, got everything squared away there. So that'll be hooked back up in the morning. We do have some hella storms coming tomorrow. So who knows what we're going to be doing tomorrow. But I do know that Marcus Ham's motor is coming back out. Scotty's coming over tomorrow night to do that. This one will be ready to go short of an air filter, or done if the air filter's here. And hopefully that one's fixed. I doubt it. These cams, I, I see nothing wrong with them, but we're gonna try. Uh, I'm also going to try changing the oil pan on Chris Charles' bike to see if it solves the smoking issue. If it does, then I have isolated the issue, because both of these bikes right here, this one and that one, they both have turbo oiling issues where they drain down into the turbo like nobody's business and they smoke. That one I can see in part because of the slant to it, but there's one thing these two have in common and only one thing these two have in common. Okay, they're different brand turbos, different oil, di different oiling systems. Everything's different except the oil pan. They both have on three oil pans. So if that solves the issue with that, I will change the pan in that. I think I already covered that. But anyway, I'm going to edit this up and get it out to y'all. Y'all have a beautiful day.